Hello everybody, welcome to another video. In this video, I want to show you how you can implement your own promise for the attack in the view. Just a full disclosure, this is not a production ready promise implementation. So for your production projects, I would highly recommend you to just use the promise itself or use a third party library that implements the promise for you. Let's start by looking at some of the requirements here. So for promise, there are three internal states the initial state when the promise object is initialized is pending state and then when the operation completes successfully it's going to turn the promise into fulfilled state if the operation fails it's going to turn the promise into rejected state you can attach handlers to the promise by calling the then method and you can chain the then method so each then method is going to return a new promise you can also use catch to catch any arrow that's thrown along the promise chain. Now let's start our implementation. So I'll start with the second bullet point. Uh, I'll start with defining three states. There are three states, uh, pending, fulfilled, and rejected. And I'm going to define the class called myPromise. With the class-based implementation, I'm going to start with defining a constructor it will accept a parameter called callback so when you have a promise usually what you'll do uh, the API looks like this new promise and it accepts a callback function that has two parameter resolve and reject and usually you can do set timeout that automatically resolves in one second with some kind of value. So what this is doing is this promise is going to re resolve in one second with the value need. Or you can do reject a new arrow and this will reject the promise in one second with an arrow not found. So in our case, our promise also accepts a callback which is uh, this function here. And we have internally, we have three states. Uh, we're going to set it to pending. We also have a value property, which will hold either the arrow or the resolved value. So in, initially, we'll set it to null. For now, I'm going to execute the callback method, but then I'm going to pass in two parameter the first parameter is called resolve. So I'm going to pass in an internal method, this dot resolve for now, and the same for the reject. And suppose there's any arrow here, I'm just going to reject the promise. This dot underscore resolve and this dot underscore reject method is responsible for updating the state and value of this promise. Let's look at this example when after one second when this promise when this line gets executed it will call reject method in this case the reject is passed in to this callback method which is essentially this internal reject method and suppose we say we want to resolve to this new arrow and the resolve method here is also passed in from um, passed in as a parameter here which is this internal resolve method so let's define the resolve method here. This resolve method is going to take a value. And for now, let's say it's going to update the result. And we use an utility method here to update the actual result as state fulfilled and also with the result value and update result is going to take two parameters the first is the value and the second is the state and for now let's just say this dot state is equal to state so value is assigned to the value we can do the same for reject method And we're going to update the result by passing in the arrow and the rejected state. 
Okay, done, but I probably should do is I don't want to update this if the promise is already resolved or rejected. So I'm going to check the this.state is not equals to states pending. If this is the case, then I'm going to do nothing and just return. The other thing I can do is to wrap this whole thing into a set timeout because right now everything inside of this could be done in an asynchronous manner. And so now we have a state update logic. The next thing we're going to look at is how are we going to take care of the them method. Let's look at the interface of a them method. The them method is going to take a callback function. Actually, both two callback functions. Um, the first one is going to handle resolved situation, and the second callback is going to handle the reject situation. So let's say there. Let's name the callbacks on success and on failure. And because the then method is going to return a new promise, we can do something like this. We're returning a new promise, passing in resolve and reject parameter. And we're going to define a new state called this dot handlers because the then method is going to attach the handlers to whatever promise it's called on. So in this case, if we have if we use this promise, then we call then method and we pass in a success handler and a failure handler. It's going to add the success uh, add a handler to this promise, let's say promise one. Okay. Let's just say we have another method called this the add handler and then we are passing in a handler which we haven't defined yet but let's make a to do here to define this then this is going to add handlers now let's define the add handler method add handler is going to take a handler what it will do is push the handler into the handlers array and now we have a handlers state that holds the all the successful and failure handler for this promise and then we want to execute these handlers when it's time and now we can define an execute handlers method which won't take anything Okay, suppose we have a promise that's still pending. We don't want to execute any successful or failure callback because the promise is just not ready yet. Um, but what if the promise has been resolved or rejected, then we absolutely want to execute handlers at that time. Suppose this promise would resolve itself in one second, the moment when this promise resolves, we want every handlers for this promise to be executed when like, the internal resolve method and reject method is called. So we also want to make sure that when we update the result, we also call this the execute handlers. Then internally, let's check if this dot state is not equal to pending. If it is equals to pending, then we're just simply doing nothing and return. But if the state is equals to state stuff fulfilled, oops, then we are going to execute uh, whatever handlers we have. This is an array. We can get each handler. Actually, let's make this an external and then inside of the callback for each handler we decide if the state is fulfilled then we're going to call handler uh, so in this case let's say we want to call the successful handler and when we call the successful handler we want to pass in a value which is the resolved value because when 
problem is, has been resolved, it's going to call the internal resolve method, which is going to update the result, which is going to update the value and the state. So by the time the handlers are executed, they would have the new value. And once we have executed this, we can just return. Otherwise, we're going to call the on failure callback and then pass in this dot value as well because if the promise is rejected it's also going to take an arrow and update the value as the arrow and the state would be uh, rejected so now we can also return um, let's just say return here cool so one more thing here, we also want to set the handlers back to an empty array because once all the handlers have been executed, now we have no handlers left to execute. This should complete the execute handler section. Next, let's come back to the them method. Earlier, we have a to do here. We actually need to define what the handler looks like. In our case, since we already call the on success and on failure method of this handler we can just say on success function is going to take a value property uh, parameter and then uh, we also have an on failure property which is going to take arrow as a parameter the on success method an example here here I defined a promise which is going to resolve itself in one second and I can do then and I can do another then method guess what's going to happen so this is returning resolved value as you can see this resolved string is passed through the first then method and then reach to the second then method that's where we log it out on the console so let's say the p is the first promise. So the p dot then method actually creates a second promise. And then when we call the second then method, then method is actually creating a third promise. Now suppose one second has passed. The first promise is now resolved. When we call then method on the first promise, it adds some handlers to the first promise. So now those handlers are ready to be executed. And after we finish executing these uh, handlers, we also want to be able to execute whatever handlers added to the second promise. Um, so we need a way to mark the second promise as resolved. So that's something we will do in on success method. What we'll do here is we first check in our case, if there's no on success passed to the then method, then we can just simply resolve the second promise, and the resolved value would be whatever value passed to this on successful method, which is actually called here in the execute handlers. By the time this function is called, the first promise would have had the updated value. And then suppose there is actually on success handler passed to the second, uh, the first then method here. Suppose it looks like this p dot then console dot log. I'm here. So simple example. What's gonna happen is we want to call the on success handler on the value because this is going to do some pre-calculation and then after this unsuccessful method is executed we want to resolve the second promise because there's no other handlers left otherwise we are going to reject the promise with the arrow similarly we can do almost the same for the on failure method. Instead of checking on success exists or not, we check if on failure exists or not. And here, 
if nothing is passed into uh, passed into the them method second parameter we're just going to reject it so that let's suppose the first promise throw some arrow because it's chained without a failure callback and then when we keep chaining like this in the end we could add a catch method which accepts an on failure callback so when we reject it it's going to ignore the second uh, the first and the second then method and reaches to the catch method uh, but once we catch it and then we call them method again on that we should be able to actually uh, here we want to update it to on failure so suppose catch returns a string here the next chain them method would be able to take that string as a parameter uh, return maybe another string and keeps the chaining going okay so this is the then method we have right now there is one edge case so when we call resolve here it's re resolving to like a non-promise type of value but in some scenario you can also resolve to another promise um, and then that new promise let's say has another set timeout in it and it's going to the new promise is going to resolve in one second to a string um, in this case what's happening is we want to wait till the this promise is resolved and then resolve this original promise so let's say this is promise one promise one resolves to a new promise in one second the new promise is promise two and then in one second promise one re uh, promise two resolves at that moment we want to resolve promise one and whatever handler is added to promise one will then be executed so we're going to update our code a little bit to be able to meet this requirement. There's actually one simple change we can add here. We can check if the resolve value is available or not. If it is available, then we are going to add a handler to this promise to and say, hey, when you are ready to be resolved or when you are ready to be rejected also resolve or reject promise one so we are passing in uh, on success and on failure callback here the on successful callback is going to say hey i'm going to resolve this and then the failure callback is going to say hey just to resolve uh, reject when you reject the second promise also reject the first promise okay now i think we have a full solution here we are going to also add the catch method the catch as you can see is going to take only one callback it's very similar to dot then but the first uh, on success callback is null and then so we are going to do the same here we're just going to say this dot then no one liner. Okay. I hope you all enjoyed this video and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Also, feel free to leave any comments or give it a like.